So um, that's uh, part of the story. Let's uh, try to understand it a little better still. Um, so what does the state look like? Well, the state looks like e to the i k x x times a state of the oscillator, n y. OK, uh, so what, what is happening here? Uh, we could resolve this problem using a different gauge. And you will. You will solve it at least once or twice again, this problem, using a different gauge. And the solutions are going to be looking a little different. But of course, you're going to find the same Landau levels and the same infinite degeneracy. The wave functions will look sometimes a little more intuitive. Um, so in this case, uh, one calculation that is interesting to try to understand the physics of this degeneracy is to work roughly, uh, a little heuristically, on a finite size sample. You imagine a material, but it's now finite size. Uh, so let me remark to you what are the f degrees of freedom you have here. Suppose you solve this Schrodinger equation in a different gauge, a symmetric gauge in which there is an Ay and an Ax. Solutions then are going to look a little more like circular orbits. There's a little more mathematics involved in solving it, but they're going to look a little nicer. But how are they related to these ones? Well. Anyone with a circular orbit must be related to these solutions by first forming a superposition of those solutions, maybe localizing it or doing something, and then doing a gauge transformation. So in order to compare your solutions in different gauges, you have to take into account you have an infinite degeneracy and you have gauge transformation. So to see what state here corresponds to a particular state here, it may be the gauge transformation of a particular superposition in this side. So it's, in general, not all that easy to do. OK, so let's take a f uh, count states in a finite sample. So same picture, but now the material is here. And we'll put Lx and Ly here. So finite size in Lx, finite size in Ly. So given our intuition with quantization, this suggests that we impose periodic boundary conditions in x and try to quantize the kx here. In general, if you're imposing thinking of very large boxes, which is the case here, it doesn't matter much whether you impose periodic or vanishing boundary conditions or anything, essentially at large number of states, it makes no difference. So we quantize in x. So we want e to the i, i, k, x times x to be periodic under x goes to x plus lx. How about, ooh, I'm almost done with time. So kx. Lx will have to be equal to a multiple with nx. Since we know that y0 is equal to minus kx lb squared, we should take nx negative so that you're within the sample. You must be in y positive, and therefore uh, kx should be negative, and x should be negative. And now I have a way to count, because I can take nx 
negative up to some value minus nx bar. And when nx grows, kx grows and y grows. So I can take the last nx that I can use is the one in which the orbit is still in the sample up to the value y naught. So this, is, this number is really the degeneracy because this is how many values of nx I can have from minus nx up to zero are the number of values that are consistent with a state still in this sample. So y naught equal to ly should be equal to minus kx times lb squared. So it's minus 2 pi nx bar over lx times lb squared. And this gives you nx. We can solve for nx there. nx is ly lx over lb squared over 1 over 2 pi. So nx is the degeneracy. This is the degeneracy. And it's equal to the area divided by lb squared, which is h bar c over qb times 1 over 2 pi. So it's equal to area times b divided by 2 pi h bar c over q. So we're back to the kind of thing we were saying before, in which the degeneracy, degeneracy is equal to the flux divided by the flux quantum that we figured out earlier today. So uh, this is how much, how much states you can put on the sample. So you find, you're given a magnetic field, a Tesla, and you have some area, you find the phi, you divide by phi naught, and that's the number of degenerate states of each Landau level. So in particular, given that we have that number, that phi naught is equal to about 2 times 10 to the minus 7 Gauss times centimeter squared, if you have a, a sample of 1 centimeter squared and you put 1 Gauss, the value of the flux over phi naught would be uh, 1 Gauss centimeter squared over 2 times 10 to the minus 7, same units. So it's about uh, 5 million states. That's just to give you an idea of how big the numbers are. Um, that's the degeneracy. So uh, this is a classic problem, very important in condensed matter physics. Uh, it's the first step in trying to understand quantum Hall effect and, and many things. And uh, it's important to solve it and think it in, in several ways. And I think you will be doing that in homework and recitation.